So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all the shirts all sparkly, spanky clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> I just checked myself out. And then we'll use it, why? And then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater of a magic around. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I think that's what we're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of By the By. This episode was pre recorded. I hope you enjoy it as Bradford and I take a different track with this one. So pour yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and get ready to look at the world in a slightly different way. All right, so tonight, what are we going to talk about today? Tonight, whatever time a, of day it is for people listening. Give me an E. E, give me a C. I'm not going to do the whole economics. Okay, that's a very long word. I'm waiting to see where this goes. I, I'm not even sure I can spell econ- <laughs> yeah. economics, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So I've been um, diving into economics a bit lately. Because we're both fucking nerds. Mm-hmm. And admittedly, as I sit here and listen to all of these economics terms and principles and theories, all I can think about is how they apply to swinging. I know, right? How they apply in my life at the moment. And so what we thought we would do for you in this podcast is to go through some of these definitions, terms, principles of economics, tell you the real like economic definition, boring, and then how they apply to swinging. (laughs) Way more exciting. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to disagree with you there because on top of what she just said, I'm going to add that I love economics. I think (laughs) economics is one of those fascinating things. Like it is a... It is because it kind of joins psychology and money. Yeah. Or or psychology and... um, Yeah. And... and, uh, The greater community, I would say. I'd say money. You're absolutely right. It's money. It's supply and demand. It's you've got uh, got a finite amount of a resource and how do we best distribute that resource and how do we best use that resource and why do we want that resource to begin with? Right. Economics is a fascinating subject matter, which I was very excited to learn that you were excited about it. And then when we started talking about how it blends with swinging yeah. and the swinger lifestyle and polyamory, I was like, all right, yeah, let's, let's do a deeper dive into the economics of swinging. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that tonight, yeah. today, whatever time of day, morning. I don't okay, know. You need to let that one go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, what kind of like, do we have like basic? So um, I have, how deep are we going? I don't know. Okay, how deep a dive are we diving? So admittedly, I have a list of a number of principles, terms, theories, etc. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say that I bothered to order them in any like light to heavy fashion. Oh. I just kind of wrote them down as I came across them. Okay. And came upon them. So we're just going to go through in whatever willy-nilly order I want. I, I really, look, I really appreciate that. And... Um, I'm a bit terrified by it. Well, if you want to take over the editing, you can edit it into whatever order you want. I really don't want to take over the editing. Yeah, so it's going to be in my order, um, which I, is willy-nilly style. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, I do want to hit real quick that uh, that I, I want to do a basic definition of economics mm-hmm. because like everybody, we all think we know what economics means, but mm-hmm. look, the basic definition of economics is the social science – so it is the social science that studies the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. And why I think this works for us is that swinging itself is all about the production, mm-hmm. distribution, mm-hmm. and consumption mm-hmm. of goods mm-hmm. and services. So I think to... I totally see how this is appropriate. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those things that I think that a lot of us don't realize that we're we're using basic economic principles when we make these choices in a swingers club or when we're on a date. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the more information you have about it, the the better wiser decision decision that you might be able to make. Yeah, absolutely. Woo-hoo. So the one I want to start with, okay, is a bit of why swinging and not cheating. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. It's loss aversion. 
Okay. So in economics, uh, loss aversion refers to people's, or I guess it's more maybe cognitive psychology, but either way, uh, it refers to people's tendency to prefer avoiding a loss to get a gain as opposed to gain something without a loss, if that makes sense. So basically, I would rather not lose 50 cents than to find a 50 cent piece. Fair enough. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because once you already have something, you you give it a greater value than right than what it has. So you don't want to lose something, but if you were to stumble across or find that thing, then you're kind of like, okay, yeah, that's bonus, but it's not as you don't feel it as deeply as if you lost it. So there's a very classic, and this wow, this this, this just shows you that I, I read too much into economics. Mm-hmm. So there's a very classic. Um, economics experiment along this line, which is the coffee mug experiment. So admittedly, I don't remember who the, uh, the scientist behind this was, but he won a Nobel prize for this experiment. And when Nobel prize winners, uh, win the Nobel prize, it's common that they donate something to the Nobel prize museum. He donated his last remaining coffee cup, coffee mug from this experiment. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I have a feeling you're going into another one as well at the moment. Interesting. So let's see where you go. This was the loss aversion one. So what okay. he did was he took um, his students. I think there were 100 students in his class. He bought 50 coffee mugs. And he gave randomly 50 of the students these coffee mugs. And then later was asked, um, people were asked, how much would they pay for the coffee mug? Mm-hmm. Students who owned the coffee mug already, because it was given to them, uh, rated the coffee mug between a seven and ten dollar purchase. Mm-hmm. That's what they would sell their coffee mug for. People who didn't have the coffee mug, the highest they would give for it was five dollars. So once you had something, mm-hmm. it was worth more than okay. if you had to give up something to get it. Right. So it's a very classic um, loss aversion kind of experiment yeah and and what was and this is what it proved was that once something is in your possession it's got more value yeah because losing something feels so much worse than gaining that something like like you said like once you have it it's so hard to give it up so how does this apply to swinging because i can already come up with an idea where it doesn't support the cheaters so i feel like you are more likely to cheat when you're at risk of losing something. Because if you have a relationship in which you're stable and your partner is, you have a partner and they're there and and that's good, everybody thinks it's good, but you actually want something more, you're more likely to cheat on that partner than you are to have the honest conversation and say, I want something else, I want something different. Because you don't want to lose the stability of what you have. Fair enough. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So you're saying that it's done cheating, so it's done without the communication. So, right. But that's still a risk of, you're you're still at risk of losing something. So the You are. But the it's interesting because you're assuming that you can beat the system, which we all know you can't. Yeah. Unless your partner is willing to overlook, which happens a lot of times. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, so you you may be more likely to say I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat rather than be honest with my partner about what I want because I don't want to lose the stability that I have, even though it may not be exactly what I want. It's something. It's comfortable. Interesting. Yeah. So it's in, it, so what I see also, which I'm assuming will will uh, dip into another. Mm-hmm. Um, sunk cost i'm guessing That's i'm, here, I'm yes. skipping ahead uh-huh. uh which is if you're at a club and you're a couple and you've talked to people you've got a couple that you've already spoken to for a while you're probably less likely to risk losing that couple because you feel like you could play with them by going and talking to another couple because that couple is your coffee mug they have a greater value than because they're talking to you, because they've got a, a relationship with you, they've got a greater value than what you might have given them if they weren't your couple. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I feel like I rambled a bit. I hope the, <laughs> no, that made that made absolute complete Hopefully sense. the people yeah. at home, that agree, they agree yeah. with me. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the next one is uh, hedonistic or hedonic. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Hedonic or affective forecasting. Okay. uh, Which is basically, to 
put it in a nutshell, it is estimating the emotional impact of a future event. Oh my God. Yes, we all do this with swinging. Yes. Oh my God. So this, this is impacts, terrible. This impacts your decisions, your preferences, your behavior. And I mean, we can totally see it going into a new swinging relationship. So, yeah. NRE, new relationship energy. You have this idea as to what this new relationship is going to present to you. And you think this is going to bring me this much amount of fun, of entertainment, of, of joy, of pleasure, whatever it may be. And, and so you, you kind of, you forecast, you have this idea that, that this is what this is going to be. And it may or may not live up to your expectations. Yeah, no, I, I can also see that as you're looking at it from a much wider cast net than what I was looking at it. I was looking at it like a night. So yeah. we, we a couple uh, that might have children, uh, we would have a babysitter lined up. We would, this is what we're going to do. So we've got a babysitter lined up for Friday. We've got a hotel in the city on Friday night. We're spending the night in the city. We're either having a date or we're going to go to a club. So you're putting so much pressure and expectation yeah. on the night that if it doesn't fulfill whatever random metric you have in your head, it's a failure. Right. Yeah, because especially, like you said, if you do, if you are not able to to go to a swingers club or to have dates or to play frequently, then you may put a lot of pressure on those times that you are able to. And if they don't meet up, if you have a bad date, which happens, yeah. if you have a no-show, which happens, if you go to the club and you don't really click with anyone, which happens, then you may feel like this night was kind of a failure. And and that's but that's not the truth. Because you're looking at it yeah. through a distorted lens. Yeah. And that's a, that's a really interesting and sad kind of point is that you know, you are looking at you're looking at the night through a lens that you've created. And mm -hmm. so it's frustrating because your partner might have a different lens. Yeah. And so they might just be happy to get out of the house. But you and have some time with you, yeah. And if there's a little something extra, then bonus. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting. This falls into something that I do, which I would have never called it. What do you call it? Hedonic forecasting, uh, hedonic or affective forecasting. So you know, I often call this is exactly what I do, mm -hmm. uh, but I call it scripting. So I script out what it's supposed to look like in my head. And as soon as anything starts to deviate from that script that's in my head, I start to shut down and I start, it starts uh, yeah. to affect me negatively mm -hmm. because I'm like, things aren't going according to plan. Let's, I need to fix this. How do I fix this? And then it's me scrambling, trying to fix something that really isn't broken. It's not broken. And there may be no way to get it back on track to the point that you would be happy with it. Exactly. And if it did get back to that point, you probably wouldn't recognize it either way. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's interesting that I, that has an actual name. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. But yes, I, I see myself doing that. Uh-huh. All right. Next one. You ready? Sure, I'm ready. All right. Cost-benefit analysis. <laughs> So I think most people know what this is, but it's basically where you estimate the strengths and weaknesses of various situations, scenarios, alternatives, and you look to see which option provides the best approach to give you what you want. So you walk into a, a swingers club and there's three couples sitting down uh, and you're trying to decide which couple do you want to sit down next to? Mm -hmm. You've got, on a scale of one to 10, you've got the couple that looks like a three, but their personality is a six. Then you've got the couple who looks like a, a 10, but their personality just at glance is a two. And then you've got the couple that looks like a eight and their personality is also an eight. Mm -hmm. So you decide, who do I sit down next to and invest my time and invest my effort for the greatest return on that investment. Yeah. So we're looking for an ROI and whether or not we admit to it. And admittedly, I should say, economics is all about cold calculation. It's not about feelings. It's not about emotion. It's about what can I get back from my investment? It's yeah. all about ROI. It's, I was gonna say, it's, is the investment, does, does it out like, does the benefit outweigh the costs, basically? Like, can I put effort into this and get something back out of it? Yeah. 
And so you decide which couple do I sit next to? Mm -hmm. Which couple am I a, am I a looks couple? Am I a personality couple? Meaning, am I, I say, are we a looks couple or are we a personality couple? Meaning, do we look good or are we personable? Mm -hmm. And, I'm going to be honest. For us, we're more personable than we look good. Absolutely. We look, we look great. Acceptable. Um, I like the way you look. Yeah. I'm d- decently would, happy with the way I look. I would say acceptable. But I know that personality-wise is where we shine. Yeah. Once we talk to people, that's it. Um, but you make that decision. And who do you sit down next to? Who do you invest your time with to see who you can get what you're looking for out of? I would say absolutely. And, and as or, well, I yeah. would say... For us in particular, it's a bit complicated because we are so out and public with our lifestyle that some people are okay with that and some people aren't. And so sometimes we may meet people who aren't necessarily as okay with it. And so we're like, all right, well, let's not put our energy into cultivating that relationship because they don't really want to associate with us because we are a little more public with what we do. Right. That we're completely open and, and honest with what we do and in who we are and how our relationship is. And so we may find others who are either on a similar vein as us or are at least okay with it. And it's like, all right, well, that's where I'm going to invest my time and my effort because these people are okay with that. And I know that they're going to accept us and there's not going to be that awkward time. Well, we're not really okay with that. So we're just going to let you go to the wayside. Yeah. And, and that's happened to us. It has. And it's, yeah. it's fine. I mean, it's one of those things that I totally understand it's it. It's how life happens. Because yeah. again, it's the ROI. What mm-hmm. am I getting out of the relationship? Mm-hmm. And am I getting something, am I getting enough to air quotes pay for what I'm investing? Right. Right. Um, it's, it's interesting, and I, I think a lot of people can have hurt feelings over this. Absolutely. And don't get me wrong, it stings. But at the same time, if you look at it from a purely economical point of view, it makes sense. It does. And I think that's the kind of the side note to take from this is to take a step back. And when you have interactions with people where it may not go your way, or they may not see things the same way that you see things, or things may not the play out the story may not play out the way that you want it to is to take a step back look at it from the other person's perspective the other couple's perspective and see what is it that they're looking at and what is it that they're seeing from this because it could very well be that they're like hey this is too much for us right now and we can't handle this and we we need to take a step back from that and you have to respect that you can't take it personally. Right. And I would say that that's something that we have very much learned and accepted is that this is our lifestyle. This is who we are. And some people are okay with that and some people aren't. And if they aren't, they're probably not going to be as close to us at this point. Yeah. You know, we still like them very much, but it's not going to be the same relationship. Right. It's, it's interesting. Uh, I do think it's something that another thing that I would add to just what you said was that don't, don't take it personally. I yeah. think everybody's, yeah. uh, unlike monetary economics, and I think economics in general, with, you know, with what I said, uh, at, at the very beginning, saying it's a social science, everybody views it a bit differently. So, you know, if you have an interaction with a couple, the next interaction with your same interaction that you could have with the next couple might be completely different yeah. because what they value is 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 different. Mm-hmm. They may not be looking at personality. They may be looking at looks or they may not be looking at looks. They may be looking at personality or whatever. It's some sort of in between. Your oral skills? Maybe your oral <laughs> skills. Get that on your business card uh-huh. or maybe a t-shirt. Uh-huh. I suck good. Uh, <laughs> nom, nom, nom. That's what I need on a shirt. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's interesting, but yeah. I like it. All right. So next one. Yeah. Framing errors. Oh, God. Errors. I'm, errors are hard. Errors. Errors. Uh, so framing errors. So basically this is an example. So this is actually more of a psychology thing, really. Um, but it's a cognitive bias in which people react to a particular choice in different ways based on how it's presented. For example, if you go to the grocery store, you don't bring your own bag, and you're charged 15 cents. Or, I don't know, 50 if you're in Australia. 
or if you bring your own bag and you're given a discount of 15, 50 cents or whatever it is. So you have a different perception as to whether that's positive or negative. Because if you're charged for a bag, you're like, this is kind of shit. This is crap. Yeah. I shouldn't be charged for a fucking bag. And so you have a very negative attitude towards that. Versus if you bring your own and you're given a discount, then it's a very positive thing. And you're like, hey, this is good. Yeah, yay, I'm doing something good and I, I'm rewarded for it. This is a, a common one with coffee shops as well. Yeah. Where if you bring your own cup, you get a, a percentage discount off your coffee. Whether, But if you don't, you might be charged for the cup. Yeah. And you're like, well, why am I charged for the cup? I'm not going to buy a coffee without a cup. Mm -hmm. When in fact, you might if you brought your own cup mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm hmm yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would say that we we see this definitely in the swinging world. Is that it's it's very much a perception as to how are things presented in a positive or a negative way, and a lot of times it can be either if you're going to a club or a private venue, a lot of places that we see have a coat check or a locker fee. Oh yes. And you get it back. And so you're like, hey, yay, I turn in my key or I get my stuff and whatever, and then I get my money back, and it's great. Um, you can also look at it in the the realm of relationships. So correct me if I'm wrong, but what uh -huh. I'm thinking of is let's say we go to Desire and we expect to have sex and we don't have sex. Right. Then I would see that as that's kind of a negative because I'm I'm going to Desire because it's a sex holiday and I don't have sex. Comparatively, if I went to a vanilla resort and suddenly yes. somebody wants to have sex with me and I'm like, holy shit. This is outside of what I framed. This is a, a framing error. Because you weren't expecting it. Because I wasn't, it. What, yeah. wasn't expecting it. So suddenly I get something that I was completely not thinking of. And we've done this ourselves going to bars. Yep. We've And comparatively a bar to OSS. We've gone to OSS on nights where we're like, we're going to bang. Yeah. We're going to hook yeah. up with somebody. And we get there and we don't. And it was a great night. But because we expected to hook up with somebody and we didn't, it's kind of like... You leave the club with a bad taste in your mouth. That we've, is so we've true. We've also gone to bars in, in Crow's Nest where we're just going to have fun and like just see each other. And we start talking to these people and we're like, holy shit, you're swingers. Do you want to bang? And we do. And it's like, holy shit. And that, we bring them home. <laughs> it's like crazy. It makes <laughs> yeah. the night amazing. So is that... Yeah, absolutely. Because it is very much you go into the night with one expectation and... You know, you if you go in with a negative expectation or maybe neutral, then you come out with something positive. You're like, this is so amazing. Oh, my God, it was the best experience ever. But if you go in expecting that and then you come out not having met that expectation, then you're very much like, oh, yeah, well, it's all right. Wah, wah. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's fair enough, but yeah. it wasn't like stellar. It was good, but it wasn't yeah. great. When, yeah. in fact, it was probably great. You just. You weren't looking at it through the right you're lens. You're not looking at it through the right lens. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. All right. So the next one. We all understand this one. Search costs. <laughs> so it's basically the costs involved in finding a product or a service. Oh, fuck me, Linda. <laughs> if I could tell you the percentage of our income that goes to search costs. <laughs> I don't think I want to know that percentage no, of income. No, you probably don't. Uh, you know, in time. I mean, time costs time. something. Like, yeah. I think about fucking Tinder, fucking Grinder, yeah. fucking Scruff, yeah. fucking Boy Ahoy, f fucking OkCupid, okay fucking RHP. Yeah. Ugh. It's it's that cost incurred to find that, that better product or service. And it's it's to meet more or new people, different people, to expand the network, to expand our horizons. And, and just, um, it's an emotional cost, it's a physical cost, it's a monetary cost. And it's a question of how much do you invest? And I think for every couple, for every person, this is very different. Yeah, I agree. But you do have to sort of ahead of time identify what do you want to put into this? Whether that is an emotional, a time, a monetary cost, whatever realm it takes, you have to identify that ahead of time. You have to see where you go with it, revisit it from time to time, and determine if you need to adjust that. Because we certainly adjust it in a lot of ways yeah, here and there. And sometimes we put more 
time into things. Sometimes it's more monetary. It, it, it does fluctuate as to how that looks for us. Well, we were talking recently about paying for Tinder. Yeah. And Tinder is something that occasionally we pay for. That's a, that's a reframing of the monetary cost. Mm. Like, look, this is what I'm, I, I, this is what I want. How much is am I willing to invest to get what I want? Yeah. And ultimately, I can tell you, you don't get what you want. The only way to do that is to really invest a lot and to pay for what you want. Fair enough. Consistently. To get exactly what you want. Right. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely something you have to look at. Yeah, sure. absolutely. And I think as a couple, it's a good thing to set out ahead of time as to how much effort do we want to put into this? How much money do we want to put into it? Time? All of that. And and recognize that it will change over time. Yeah. But at least have a baseline and then revisit from time to time. Yeah, I think it is something that you have yeah. to have a, this is what we're going to do. And then every four to eight weeks, you revisit it and say, you know, yeah, are we happy with the amount of money? Time? Than that. <laughs> say what? I was going to go more like three to five months, but. <laughs> I, I think it's one or at least every month, every other month, mm. because the number of people that like, let's say you have a month that is a boon mm. and you, in a month you meet six couples. Fair enough. Over, over the interwebs, yeah. over Tinder, OkCupid, RHP, whatever. And it works really good. Well, maybe next month you'll drop that investment to see where these six couples go. If you lose four of those couples over the next the next month, perhaps the next month you'll invest again. Okay. And so it depends on what your number of investments that you're looking for. Well, how many couples do you want to juggle yeah. uh, to, yeah. to call enough. it a success? Okay. And I think each month that changes, to be honest. Yeah. I, I can buy that. It does for me, at least. Yeah. Um, so this one is a fun one. And I, this is one that we have had a lot of discussions over. A lot of bottles of wine over. <laughs> okay. Sunk cost. Ooh, I already mentioned this. I, 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 read, I, know. I read out of this. I know. Are you going to tell the real definition? Yes. And then I'll talk about... So sunk cost is the cost has a, that has already been incurred and cannot be recovered. So it is just, what have you put into this? If you've ever seen the movie The Money Pit with mm -hmm. Tom Hanks and Shelley Long... Pretty sure it's Shelley Long. Uh, that's the that movie is is sunk cost. Yeah, they they bought a, a house. They are looking to remodel the house. Everything they put into the ma into this house gets destroyed. I mean, it's just it's a mess. Yeah, uh, it's a mess. And I think that there is not a person in an in a relationship. No, nope. any relationship, be it even monogamous. Yeah, yeah. monogamous. No. Like with your friends, yeah. with your family, with, with work, work yeah. that hasn't experienced sunk costs at some point. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it is one of those things that it is, um, you know, how much emotional, in, you know, cost do you put into it? How much physical cost? How much um, monetary cost do you put into it? Like it's... There's a lot of effort that can go into these things. And at what point do you call it? You know, if we go on a number of dates with a couple and we sort of like them, but not really, but we haven't really gone any further, at what point do you just say, no, that's it, we're done, it's not worth it. And by the same token, if you have a really passionate, deep relationship with someone, and then things kind of peter off or something happens and things get weird or whatever the case may be. When do you call it? But you're like, ultimately, you know, we've but all it, felt but that we way. we put months you're, into this. You're years. like, I've already invested yeah. this much into it. I'm going to stick it out. Yeah. You know, and another example, a much smaller scale example would be, again, going to a swingers club. Swingers club. Yeah. And let's say you've talked to the same couple for 30 minutes or even an hour and a half. You've only you've invested all this time, emotional effort, conversation with one couple. And then you're like, I'm not really into this couple. Really. Mm -hmm. You figure out that you and your partner, you're like the couple's nice. They're good people, but you don't want to fuck them. But you're at a swingers club and you're like, I might as I came here to get something. I came here to 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 have sex with someone other than my partner. 
I might as well have sex with this couple. That or even more basic, I've paid an entry fee. Yeah. I've paid this amount to be here tonight. I should get something for it. Yeah. And that's a that's a that's a example of sunk cost that I think a lot of us forget that we have. Yeah. And so we do that because we've either paid entry to this club, so we're going to fuck something, or we've invested <laughs> enough time with this couple, so we might as well fuck them. Right, right. When in fact, you might be a lot happier or more satisfied if you didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, you, if you looked at it as in the sunk cost case, which is, look, this is money I'll never get back. Mm. I know from the beginning I'm not going to get this back, so I'm not going to worry about the money, the time, the effort. And I'm just going to sort of, if I'm, I'm only going to play with people I'm really interested in. Yeah. And it can also be difficult as well. If you are in an established relationship or you are in a newly established relationship and things may or may not be going your way. And then the question is, when do you call it? Do you call it? Do you let it go? Do you see what happens? And especially if it's pretty new where you might be like, this is, it, it was really great at one point. Now it's maybe petering off and there's a bit less. And so it can be really tough to say, you know, I've put effort into this, but maybe it's not worth it anymore. Maybe we need to, yeah, maybe we need to stop. And that's a really hard decision to make. Yeah. I will Um, say I'm terrible at ignoring sunk costs. Yeah. I'm very much, I'm, I'm going to admit I'm very bad about, I've put so much effort into something. I want it to come to fruition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, I'm the worst. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sunk costs. Mm, Oof. No, no. So bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next one. Yeah. It has two names. Oh, good. Yeah. Like me. Uh, the catch up effect. Catch up? Catch up. I prefer the mustard effect. I'm sure you do. Right. Or relish. Do you relish uh, I in relish it? in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or the theory of convergence. Okay. So basically, so there's two ways I can frame this one. Okay. So patience. I'll try. All right. So poor or developing economies grow faster than economies with higher per capita income. And all economies will eventually converge in terms of their ec- income per head. Or... Um, Nations transition from the beginning stages of industrialization to highly industrialized nations, and the same societal patterns will emerge, eventually creating a global culture. Okay. Right. So basically, when you start... So the way I apply this to swinging... Yes. It might be a stretch. We should have said this um, caveat at the beginning of the podcast, but if you're an economist... You probably shouldn't be listening <laughs> because this is not all like tit for tat, like word for word, whatever. It's all our our theoretical envisions of it. Is that an econ- a, ty- a kind of economy where we get like a tit for a tat? Well, I got some tits. Holy shit balls. Look at them tits. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, so yeah. And it, the way that I applied the con- the theory of convergence to swinging is that when you start swinging or have an open relationship, it is easier to meet people i.e. fresh meat syndrome. Oh, yes. Yeah. And over time, the number of new people and the new relationships that you make will decrease or they may take more work to make happen. Fair enough. That's absolutely correct. I yeah. think that you can, we could create a new uh, account on Grinder and immediately see that absolutely. effect. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when when you have that that early economy or that early entrance to something, yeah. then there's this huge spike in interest. And there's this huge like wave of, yeah, this is going to happen. We're going to make this work. And then the longer you're there, it, it kind of takes time. And eventually it all equ- equilibrates. And yeah. so you will... It's as if the economy itself starts to boot you, yeah. boost you. Yeah. So you will equilibrate and you will be fine. And so you'll find that medium, happy medium of... I get enough, I give enough, but it's not all that kind of initial takeoff, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah. And so it's funny, ways you can kind of get around that is if you change your picture <laughs> on, on your profile pic or on your, like whatever profile pic you have on Grinder, mm-hmm. on, on uh, Tinder is a little different because of the way it's set up, uh, but definitely on like RHP. But that's an option. Yeah. If Tinder. you change yeah. that, you can immediately... 
you know, the, the people who will start to notice you again. So I can see that uh, with that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I like that one. Because it does really, it, it does highlight kind of how things go. And admittedly, if, and for us at times early on, especially where we were more active or less active, you know, if we're more active and you would, get into it, then there would be like a ramp up in their in interest. And like, yeah. hey, there's a lot of people that are pinging us, that are messaging us, that are interested. And it feels good. And so you're yeah. you start to act up on that and it's it's a self fulfilling prophecy to a point. Right. And so you ride that for a little while and then you kind of get to where it's like, okay, well now this is a stable thing and, and we're just kind of going along. But then if you back off for a little while, if life gets in the way, things happen, you're not as active and then all of a sudden you come back, it's like rebuilding all yeah. of that again. And But yeah, it is interesting how it kind of takes off in the beginning. And you even see that in but, the swingers clubs where people, the people who, like if you're an established group, let's say there's two to five couples mm-hmm. and a new couple shows up, everybody says, hi, you know, is this your first time? They they start like, it's again, it's that fresh meat yeah. Sort of syndrome. Yeah. And you start chatting with that couple because they're brand new. There's something different. There's something mm-hmm. outside of what you're used to. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. So there is that initial build and it will eventually equilibrate and become the norm. But until then, it is it is something different. So Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. I like that one. That was fun. <laughs> uh, so the next one. All right. This is going to take a bit of a reach for you. Okay. Are you ready for it? I'm ready to reach around. All right. <laughs> the liquidity trap. Um, sorry, the liquidity what? Yeah, yeah. Liquidity trap. It's a tarp. Uh-huh. So, okay. So in a, the purest of economics terms, so we're okay. talking money here. Yep. It is where the current interest rates are low, savings rates are high, so you get monetary pol- so monetary policy is ineffective. So basically, consumers choose to avoid bonds and keep their funds in savings because of the belief that the interest rate will soon rise. So they're keeping their money close at heart as opposed to investing it because they think that, that something big is going to happen. Are you, are you picking up what I'm putting down? I can see this in the swingers community, uh-huh, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, so is this the situation where you go into a club and you've got four couples and they're all sitting spaced out evenly apart from one another because they're expecting that unicorn to walk through the door because that's what they're really wanting. That is one scenario. Yes. So nobody talks to one another because they're all certain that the next couple to walk through the door or the next individual that walk through the door will be the ones that they really, really, really want to talk to. And they don't want to spend their currency, Mm -hmm. their time, their their time. Yeah. Yeah. Effort, sexuality, whatever you want to call it. Wasted. They don't want to waste it on another couple when they're trying to save it for that perfect couple. They don't want someone else to come in and then they they already be occupied. Yeah. 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 It also may be that you, um, the the failure to lose what relationship you have with a person or a couple or a group even, you don't want to lose that. So that prevents you from reaching out and starting anything with another couple or person. Which we have seen that. I think yeah. the perfect example of that is Jenga. Yes. The fucking Jenga effect. Yes. And there are... Explain that for people at home. Okay. So at OSS specifically, and I've seen it at other clubs as well, but specifically at OSS, they've got a dirty Jenga game. So what happens is... Without naughty, a, naughty Jenga. Naughty Jenga. Uh, so without without fail, there's one to three couples that will suggest, oh my God, we should all play Jenga. And so they bring out the Jenga game, they set it up, and anywhere from three to 12 couples will sit around this and start playing Jenga. Mm-hmm. Well, they're already a tribe. They're a group of people with a common currency of we're all invested in this game of Jenga. Then any new couple that comes in, occasionally somebody will say, oh, sit down, sit down, sit down. But as soon as you're out of seats, as soon as you're out of space, that's the currency in which yeah. they're trying to sell. Yeah. So as soon as you're out of you know real estate, location, 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 as soon as you're out of location, any new couple that were to come in, they're not going to get the attention. So they so they leave. 
And they go to the other room. And so they yeah. go to the other room. Yeah. So they're Side note, now, that's why you get there early. They're annexed <laughs> out of that room. Or you don't play fucking Jenga. I have um heard. because I think Jenga is a bit of a waste. It's the, an icebreaker, but it goes on too long. It goes on way too long, yeah. and any couple who engages in that actually loses currency because they aren't building anything of use with the people around them. So where I see this as well, taking it out of the swingers club environment on a more one-on-one kind of date situation, is that if you have a couple that you're seeing or that you're involved with or you have seen before, is that if you're if you have a date set up or you know that you could have a date set up with this couple, but there's somebody else who maybe messages you or somebody else that you could be interested in, but it's an unknown quantity, well, I already have this couple that I know I get along with and that I know I'm going to have a good time with. And we're going to have fun to whatever end, whether it's just go to dinner and drinks, whether we end up having sex and playing or not, I know that I'm going to have fun with them. But then there's this new couple that are intriguing, but at the same time, they're an unknown quantity. And so it's a matter of, do I hold what I have, and, and do we go out with this couple that is established, or do we risk it and go out with the other couple that we maybe don't know as much? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit what you've just said just okay. a little bit, because what you just said was kind of a, it could come off as you're kind of a bad person, because you're like, I'll give up what I already have. But I think what you mean is that you've offered to go with couple A who we already have a date with Mm -hmm. uh, or who we already have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. And we're still waiting to hear back from them. But then we've got an offer from couple B. Yeah. Who we don't know. They're the unknown quantity. And we're more likely to say either push off couple B to give them an answer to wait to give couple A the opportunity the, the to, chance, to yeah. chance to answer. Yeah. Not that we already have a date with them and right, we would right, cancel right. to go with somebody else. Right. I would that's never a dick cancel. move. No, I would never um, do that. But what you mean yeah. is that you've you've put the offer out to couple A, you've yet to solidify something, but the yeah. offer's there with someone you know you like. Right. I would never cancel. Right. But it's it is I mean, there are times where you're kind of like you have put something out, but then something else comes up and I mean, hell, Mardi Gras season's the best time for that yeah. because there's so much going on and you're like, I want to do this. And people yeah. say, hey, let's go to this. And you're like, but I've already committed to this. And it's just, it is that kind of catch True. 22 of like, there's so much happening that is really interesting and I'm happy with either outcome. Yeah. So which one do you pick? Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So this one's a complicated one. Oh, good. Or at least it took me a moment to understand it. Hopefully it won't take you so My long. My inebriated mind is right. so looking forward to this. Hopefully you won't uh, take so long to understand this one. Sure. Uh, victory disease. Oh, I had that, but I got vaccinated. <laughs> Not an anti-vaxxer. If you're an anti-vaxxer, please hang up and, and dial again. Or don't. <laughs> um, all right. So victory disease. This is a um, military kind of thing. Okay. Um, Lots of military in the in the swinging community. There are some military, and fuck, they're hot in their uniforms. Okay. Anyway. Focus. Um, right, right, right. So basically, so according to Wikipedia, for whatever it's worth, and then we'll <laughs> go into my definition here, um, but Wikipedia says that it's when complacency or arrogance brought on by victory or a series of victories makes an engagement end disastrously for Commander and his forces. Oh, my God. I could, yeah, absolutely. Hold on. Okay. So, basically, it's overconfidence and making decisions that may be crazy or nuts. So, it's an overestimation of what is possible. Yeah. Seen that in the Swingers Club. Like, we've experienced that, where you go three times, four times, and each time you meet a new couple Mm -hmm. or each time you play with somebody and then the fifth time you're like, this is going to be amazing because the last four times have been amazing because people just sort of throw themselves at us and then we get there and then it's fucking crickets. Yeah. And then we're like, but we're amazing. Did did you not got, did you not? Yeah. Did you folks not get the memo? So yeah, it's it's basically. Hey Lawrence, where's the memo? (laughs) The one that we're amazing. Lawrence. We need a sign. Lawrence. A banner. Oi, Lawrence. Okay. 
Yeah. So yeah, it's an overly positive assessment of your ability or your performance. Oh God, we've seen. God, we've seen. Oh my God, can we men. Talk? Look, men are the worst. Let's just. Men are the worst. Actually, women are pretty bad uh, as well. I was gonna say plastics. Oh, well, women are pretty bad as well. Yeah. But like the men who are like, I can make anyone come. I'm like, doubt that, buddy. Or the women who are like, I can make anyone come. Yeah, yeah. doubt that, baby. Yeah, yeah. So it is that overestimation, that overperformance. Yeah, and it's it's so sure that that you can make this happen, that you know what's best, that you're gonna be able to do it. And that's not always the case. Hell, I've had those yeah. moments where, like, I'm so certain that I've played with people over and over and over again that I'm not going to have a performance issue that we get into the bedroom and, like, suddenly I have a performance issue. And I'm like, wait, where did you come from? Yeah. Or where did you go? And I think part of the the caveat to this is that you have to recognize what the other person person or person's definitions of good or right or perfect is and see if you can actually meet that you have to have that conversation with them and talk to them as to what what is it that they're expecting and is that realistic or not and oftentimes it may not be but you can probably come to a middle ground and be like you know well maybe this is whatever or if you start to get into a play situation then you can you can likely appease them. But I think there has to be a bit of a conversation ahead of time as to what's expected and what is realistic. Yeah. Especially given the, the situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you, and you can't, you know, you also, it's, it's a matter of not over committing, whether it's on performance, anxiety, whatever's happening in the moment, whoever's around, you can't overcommit. Cause if you overcommit, that's going to be, that's going to be the death of it. That's why I always say, under promise, over deliver. In this situation, I would agree. Well, I always say this. My, <laughs> I use the same joke. Uh-huh. I may not be very big around, but I sure am short. Like a tuna can. Like a tuna can. Well, no, <laughs> the tuna cans are big around. I'm like the wee little tuna can. Anyway. Oh, uh, fair enough. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. I don't even know what that would equate to. What, like my pinky. It may not be very big around, but it sure is short. <laughs> Hello, this is my pinky. I'm waving it in front of the microphone as if they can see it. Nobody can see it. I know, because we didn't set up the cameras this time. Nope. Anyway. Hashtag lazy. Hashtag lazy. So, yeah. So, um, and mm-hmm. as long as you keep telling people how, how small your penis is, yeah. when they finally see it, they're like, whoa, it's gigantic. <laughs> no matter what size it is. Mm-hmm. It's what I do. Yeah. It works. The number of times I've had people say, actually, it's much bigger than you described. Yeah. <laughs> Still chokeable. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can only you can drown in only three inches of water. We get more than three inches, babe. You're good. I know, right? So you're gonna like <laughs> double drown in me. I am gonna double drown in you. <laughs> yes. Economics. Hashtag economics. I don't really know where to go with that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I feel like I, it's nowhere positive. No, there's nowhere to go with that. There's nowhere to go. So yeah, I agree with your assessment of how this applies to the uh, swinging community. Sure. Okay, we'll go with that. And, and moving on. Moving. Are sure. we moving on now? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go with the nudge theory. Do you know what this is? I feel like I should. Okay. So but nudge me along. Basically. It is that many hands make light work. Oh, my God. So positive reinforcement. Like a gangbang. Positive reinforcement and indirect suggestions are good ways to influence behavior and decision making of groups and individuals. Like a gangbang. So it is It is very much a... It's we, a we've seen that where people start... If, if a lot of people compliment one couple, everybody wants to hook up with that couple. Uh and there's been a few times where we've been that couple, where everybody compliments us. Pendulum party is the perfect example. Yeah. Um, people compliment us for for hosting the party. They compliment us about the of work we've put in, and we start seeing that people who we haven't really talked to are suddenly really interested in us because of, I mean, because of a perceived status. Right. I'm not going to say an actual status, but because of a perceived status. So I would say that we also see this when we look at uh, group behaviors is that it is in a who may be interesting and who may not be interesting. Because if a lot of people are talking to, say, one couple at the club, 
then everybody may be interested in them or more people may be because they're like, hey, look, they're the popular people or this is the in crowd to be with. So it could even be a group thing. But I would even take Which a goes back to supply and demand. Just right. On the side. Yeah. But I would take a step back from that and say that the nudge theory as well has a lot to do with consent. Because if you have a group and something may or may not be happening within that group and somebody says, hey, are you okay? Is this okay? Et cetera, et cetera. Can I do this? May I do this? Then other people will pick up that cue and say, may I do this? Can I do this? Is this okay? And so all it can take is one person to say, is this okay? May I do this? And we've seen that yeah. in, in group play where one person, one group, one subset of a group is very consent focused and they do check in before touching, before licking, before kissing or while doing something and saying, does this feel good? Does it not? Do you want this changed? You know, there could be those yeah. quick little check-ins and all it takes is one or two people in the group to do that. And all of a sudden, everybody in the group is kind of even people who are maybe new to the situation or new to the group. They may not have. I, I had this admittedly while you were gone with one of the groups that I was playing with and uh, they were a lot of new people. And I was very much, is this OK? Are you does this feel good? Do yeah. you like this? And then I noticed that other people were kind of emulating that as well. All it takes is that one person to kind of start that ball rolling and then other people may then pick up on, oh, well, maybe I should check. And is and that that's a sexy thing. That's a good thing. That's an okay thing to do. And we can talk about this during play. It doesn't have to be one-on-one -on -one interaction and then we stop talking. There's right. no communication yeah. from there on. We just play. That's not good. So it is very much, a, you know, all it takes is, is one person to kind of get that ball rolling and it can affect the behavior of the group and the decision-making of the group. And to make sure that everyone's okay and that everyone feels like they can speak up if they're that not okay. That they can okay. speak up for themselves. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So this next one, you've touched on many times tonight. <laughs> but we're going to go back to it. Okay. On its own. Okay. Risk and reward. <laughs> I have touched on that a few times. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, the risk reward ratio is looking at the expected returns of an investment to the amount of risk that they have to undertake to get those returns. And so we've looked at this many times tonight in that how much effort do you put in to get how much out of this? Right. And that can be a one-on-one -on -one date. That can be a couple thing. That can be a long-term over X amount of time we're putting this much time, effort, money into this lifestyle. And what are we getting out of it? Is it enough? Is it not enough? Do we need to reevaluate that? Do we need to look at how we do it? Do we go about it differently moving forward? And yeah, that can definitely change. I agree. And it is something that I think you need to look at more regularly than less regularly. Yeah. Um, because the amount of effort, the amount of um, investment, I should say, that you're making, whether it's time, physical, or monetary effort, that's going to change depending yeah. on what you're getting out of it and what you want to get, what you hope to get out of it. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely think that that's something that. And for some people, it is very much more of a, a mental or an emotional connection. For some people, it's more of a physical connection. For some people, it's a I mean, I, I hate to say it, but a kind of a bed notching status as to yeah. how many people can I yeah. have? Um, so, yeah, what is it for you? What are you looking for? What are you willing to put into it? And at what point do you say, I need to adjust how I do this? Yeah. And I think that that's something that as a couple or as a single, it's very good to evaluate from time to time and to take stock of what am I putting into it? What am I getting out of it? Do I need to adjust that thinking and that the line of how I do it? Yeah. Yeah. I also think we do this in day-to-day -day relationships. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's something I think that we do in every relationship that we have. Yep. And it's important to make sure that if it is with a primary partner, that you are getting out of it what you hope to get out of it. And if you're not, you should have that conversation. And like, how how do we both rectify a situation mm -hmm. where we, maybe one or both of us are not getting out? 
of this relationship, what we need to get out of it. And in fairness, there are times where you're giving more than you're taking. Sure, sure. And times where you're taking more than you're giving. Yes. But if that doesn't balance, if there's not that kind of give and take overall in the relationship, if if you're if it is always one sided, that's probably a bad sign. Yes, I agree. And whether that's a primary partner, a secondary, tertiary partner, wherever that fits in your lifestyle, you need to kind of think about that. But it is something to kind of keep an eye on and, and there is going to be give and take. Absolutely. But you need to make sure that there is always some reward for whatever risk that you're taking. And whatever that level looks like, whatever the style looks like can be very different depending on the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You ready for the last one? Yes. All right. I was born ready. Ready? Right? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So the last one I have, you don't look ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking really hard. Uh -huh. My brain hurts. Uh -huh. Anchoring bias. Okay. All right. So let me define. All right. So there's, I'll, I'll read you what I have and then I'll. So when an individual relies too heavily on an initial piece of information offered when making a decision, i.e. price. So if you see a t-shirt that costs $1,200. And then another one that's $100, you might think that the second one is cheap relative to the first one. But otherwise, if you only sell the second one, you would not think that. You might not have that information. You would say that, ooh, $100, that's a pretty good deal. And that's a really expensive shirt until you see the $1,200 one. So it's one of those things where you're at a club, there's a bunch of couples, and a unicorn walks in, and you're mm -hmm. like whoa, I'm totally into this. So I should admit that this has happened to Bradford before. <laughs> let's let's go back a bit. Uh, so we're at a club and this single lady walks in and I'm like, wow, she is amazing. Mm -hmm. She should sit, So she sits down and talks to us. We like, we really hit it off with her because she's amazing. Like, wow, she's amazing. I'm really interested in her. Then her partner comes in. <laughs> and like, I am not interested in you at all. He is just not into us. He's quiet. He's whatever. And until until I met him, I was like all about her. And then I see him and I'm like, suddenly you have lost all value at all because you're his partner. And I cannot tell you how many times that's happened. Yeah. Where one person, and it's not always male, female. No, um, no. But where one person is like, absolutely, you are the shining star of this couple. And the other one comes in and says nothing. Yes. All you have to say is a little bit here and there. But they say nothing. You don't even have to try. You just have to try to try. Right. And without any conversation, without any effort, yeah. all of a sudden your couple score has gone way down. Yeah. It's a yeah. 10 and a 0, which averages to a 5. Right. Whereas if you both came in at a five, you would have been like at an eight. Yeah. I know that doesn't, math doesn't add up, but Math it doesn't add up. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly our economics <laughs> podcast is going straight to hell. Uh, right, right. No, but you're absolutely right. It's yeah. those, it's those individuals that you're like, wow, this person is everything. And then you meet their partner and you're like, why are you with this person? Well, clearly that partner's everything. Fair enough. Which is terrible. Yeah. Oh God, that's horrible. It is horrible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But so we've I was both going seen a, that. I was going a different way with it. Okay. All right. So I think that's a very valid direction with it. Absolutely. Which I didn't think about, but, <laughs> it, but it's a very good direction. Um, the way I was going with it was that if you follow one group, one podcast, one ethos. Oh, God, that's so true. Or whatever. And when you're starting, so you have like, this is how I'm supposed to do it. That's even worse. When you go into swinging or when you go into open relationships and you say, this is how whoever does it, this is how I must do it. This is the one and only way of doing it. Or and if you go and like go to a, a, a takeover. Yeah, absolutely. And you're if like, you go to a takeover and it is absolutely, this is the only way to do this. 
and you don't explore other options and you don't see what other ways there are maybe to explore and to do this kind of thing, um, then you may be stuck and like, this is how I have to do it because this is the only way that I know. Even though it's not necessarily, I don't feel like this is best for me. Right. This is what I know what I've heard about, so this is what I must do. Yeah, so yeah, basically don't rush into it and don't use that initial experience to make your subsequent decisions. And I say that knowing that that's exactly what we did and that Absolutely. our first couple that introduced us to swinging, fortunately, I feel like did it in a very positive way. Yes. And they showed us a very good way to go about swinging and meeting couples and how to handle things, et cetera, et cetera. And it turned out well. The rules that they laid out for us were very good rules. And we still use a lot of those. We do. But at the same time, there are so many different ways of doing things that if you are introduced to one way and then you think that you have to do it that way because that's the only way, that's a bad thing. If you're introduced to that and you say, well, that's one way of doing it, but there's this other way and this way and this way. And what's really best for me that's the better way to do it, Agreed. is to take a more broad approach and say there are 10 different ways, ultimately more, but there's 10 different ways to do this. How, you know, what suits me the best? Yeah. As opposed to saying, well, this is what I found first, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm not even going to explore anything else. I'm going to be lazy about it. And and this would be my advice to even listeners of our own podcast is listen to other podcasts. Yeah. See how they do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Listen to between, you know, one, two, five, ten episodes of another podcast, of many other podcasts, and and see how how they do it, yeah. and you might find a a niche that like this is these people resonate with me. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't mean that you have to give up everything else. It just means that you may go down a different path as far as how you approach the lifestyle. Yeah, and you may still appreciate other ways of doing things, but your primary way may be one direction or another. Sure, but I mean that being said, I still like to listen to people that go about things differently than us because I want to see where things go. How does it work, et cetera. And, but it, it, that's exciting. I know that it's not going to work for me, right? but I want to see how it works for them because I'm fascinated that it does work for them Yeah, because it doesn't work for me. You know, it, does I would that agree make sense? With that. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, as yeah. long as it's healthy, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it's, that's a really, really good point. Hmm. Yeah. Listen to other podcasts. There's a billion of us out there. Oh, there's so like, many out literally there. Literally one billion. I, I counted the other day. It was like I was like, Oh my god. Really? One billion. You had a lot of time on your hands. I was bored. That was how many fingers that take? That's, like that's a lot of fingers. This many. It would have been a billion, babe. It was this many. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I counted. It was this uh -huh, many. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, but there are uh, there are a, a lot of other podcasters out there, Absolutely. and I There's... guarantee you, you will find somebody who matches exactly like what you want, yeah. and so take take heed from them. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of good things out there, a lot of good resources, and and it's just, I would say that this is a good time to be exploring and to be playing and researching and trying to feel your way around. Yeah. Because there are a lot more resources now than even when we started. There Agreed. was not much at My all. My God, the number of yeah. podcasts out there now is like every day there's a new podcast, yeah. which is both good and bad. Yeah. Uh, Grain of salt, people. Grain of salt. <laughs> right. But at the same time, there's so many more resources, even in in books, in online resources, in podcasts, everything. When, Absolutely. When we started. Yeah. But find it's a, someone It's a who, good time to be kind of getting into it and exploring and seeing yeah. where you want to go. And find someone who fits you. Absolutely. I think that's important. Above and beyond everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, economics, eh? Economics. Sexy Swing. ass, bro. Swinging. Yeah. 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 I think it's I think it's hot, uh, and I know that while we were listening to pod, other podcasts, um, there's a really great podcast called Choiceology, mm. which is one that uh, their first season was better than their second season. But a lot of the data that we got from the from this podcast came from Choiceology. So listen to Choiceology. Some of the early uh, season one, which was Dan Heath. Uh, Great stuff. That's yeah. where a lot of this came from. And what he does is he takes economic choices and sort of applies them to the real world. Uh, would highly recommend listening to that. A lot of our yeah. ideas from this podcast for this podcast came from listening to that and seeing how they applied normal everyday economics 
concepts to life. Yeah, and I would say that um, it, it is a good podcast, but it's for me, it was very much a, as I was listening to it, it was very much a, but you can apply it to my life in this way. Yeah. Which was admittedly in the swinging world and in open relationships. And um, yeah, so between that and different work things and what going on, it was very much a, we need to do some economics of swinging. Definitely. So, yeah. So if you Hope like you this, enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, if you like this, message us. Let us know. Uh, this was there was a lot of work that went into this podcast. Uh, Angela did a lot of research. I did a little bit of research, not much, but uh, Angela did a lot of research. And so, yeah, let us know what you think about it and uh, how these economic terms apply to your life and 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 what you think about them and how you approach open yeah, relationships absolutely yeah. that's uh, we're always fascinated to hear those stories yeah. so uh send us those emails the atoms of love at gmail.com or you can message us on any of our social media accounts uh facebook instagram twitter are all at by the by podcast uh you can follow us on patreon www.patreon.com slash by the by podcast or on our website, www.bythebye.com.au. We really, really, really want to hear what you think and uh, let us know yeah. the economics of your lifestyle. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I'm Dylan Thomas, co-host of Life on the Swing Set, the podcast. We share our experiences in swinging, polyamory, and beyond. You're listening to a Swing Set Network podcast at swingset.fm.